Hello! Welcome back to BioClass Bytes. This video is an introduction to taxonomy and systematics. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. In this series, we will focus on biological diversity. So those topics would include basic taxonomic concepts and principles, description, nomenclature, and identification, and the Seven Kingdom system of classification. So all throughout the, these videos, you will see images of organisms and uh, you can also see uh, at the bottom their common name uh, followed by their scientific name. So for example, this is the giant honeybee and its scientific name is Apis dorsata. So this is how scientific names are written and we will learn more about that as we go along. Previously, we've seen an image of a um, monarch butterfly with its scientific name, the Nawas plexippus. If you check out the online library, you will see there a page dedicated to my favorite organisms. So, one of those organisms is the Ibex, uh, but shown here specifically is the Nubian Ibex with the scientific name Capra Nubiana. So, now let's visit uh, that page in the online library. So these are my favorite organisms, okay? So I have two favorite flowering plants, tulip, tulipa, uh, and sunflower helianthus. So you could actually watch the videos found in my online library um, about, about these organisms. My favorite cephalopod is cuttlefish, sepia, okay? And my favorite fish is salmon, salmon, sp. My favorite amphibian is axolotl, Ambistoma mexicanum, and my favorite reptile is the Komodo dragon, Varanus komodoensis. My favorite bird is the peregrine falcon, Falco peregrinus, and uh, my favorite small size mammal is the honey badger, Melivora capensis. I have mentioned that my favorite medium-sized mammal is ibex, Capra ibex. And my favorite large-sized mammal is the elephant, Loxodanta. So you could actually watch all these videos, um, all, all uh, interesting uh, videos about my favorite organisms in the online library. The main topic of this series is biological diversity. So how do biologists distinguish and categorize the millions of species on Earth? So what they look into are traits shared due to common ancestry. So those are traits that are similar because they descended from a common ancestor. And they use that to classify and organize um, organisms okay, or categorize organisms that reflect their evolutionary history or how they changed over time. So to visualize all those relationship, relationships, uh, biologists used evolutionary trees such as this phylogenetic trees and uh, cladograms. Okay? We will learn more about those as we go along. So, so how, how, does, um, how do all of these um, are visualized by scientists? So for example, all these organisms, fish, fishes, frogs, humans, chimps, geckos, snakes, iguanas, and glass lizards, at, at some point in time in the past, all shared a common ancestor. It means that this is their, this is what's the ancestor that's common to all of them. Okay, so that they, this is their uh, most primitive ancestor. Over time, that um, their ancestors uh, evolved into several groups, and all of those give rise to all these different species. But again, they all shared a common ancestor. Um, then eventually, as time goes by, some of them evolved to have a characteristic uh, such as having four limbs. So that one, uh, a hatch mark here, represents a character shared by the groups okay, to the right of the mark. So for example, this group evolved to have four limbs. This one did not. So eventually, they become um, the, the different species of um, fish. Okay? But the rest of the four limbs, they are the ones that um, evolved to become frogs, humans, chimps, and the rest. Um, how, and then at this point, this group of organisms evolved to have hair. So those are your humans and chimps and other related uh, groups. At this point, okay, some of this, uh, so, so geckos and the rest of this group had a common ancestor, but the group of snakes evolved to have no limbs. 
uh, and the, the same as uh, glass lizards, right? While iguanas retain their limbs. So this is how biologists visualize common ancestry uh, as reflected in their evolutionary history. So this is how they categorize, identify, organize, and categorize living things based on their uh, similar traits and common ancestry. So we will learn more about that as we go along. Uh, please note also that chimps and humans form what they call a sister group because they are, the, they are each other's closest relative. To learn more about taxonomy, I recommend that you watch this video from Monkey C entitled What is Taxonomy? I'll provide the link in the description below. This one also is a video from Crash Course, Taxonomy Life's Filing System. Again, linked in the description below. So the term taxonomy is taken from the ancient Greek word taxis, meaning arrangement, and nomia, meaning method. So arrangement, method. So this is uh, a branch of science um, that focuses on defining and naming groups of biological organisms, again, based on the shared characteristics, based on their shared traits, based on their common ancestor. So this is an image of gorilla, western gorilla, with the scientific name gorilla gorilla. In taxonomy, organisms are grouped together into taxa, so that's plural, singular taxon. And these groups are given taxonomic rank. So organisms with similar structures are grouped together into taxon. And then um, as these groups um, um, become bigger, no, they can be clustered to form a bigger group of higher rank. And eventually, that creates a taxonomic hierarchy. So, this is how it looks like. So, groups of organisms into a bigger group, into a bigger group, bigger, 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 bigger group. Okay? So, the principal ranks in modern use are domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So, by the way, uh, this one is pronounced... Um, species and it is always written in uh, plural form always with an s at the end okay even if you're just talking to one group of organisms so this is an image of a frilled naked lizard with the scientific name of clamidosaurus kingi the resulting biological classification of a particular organism is somewhat similar to a postal address, okay, in which you need all the following information to send a letter or a package to that person. So we can actually compare this information to the different uh, taxonomic ranks in the Linnaean uh, classification. So, for example, you want to send a letter to a person, and in our example, in our in our um, uh, comparison, that would be the species Panthera pardus, okay, or this is the uh, sp scientific name of a leopard, okay, so that's the species that we want to send our letter to. So before we, we identify that organism, we have first to know the country, okay, that we are sending that letter to. So in, in our um, comparison, the country, Philippines, the country is similar to the domain, and that's domain Eukarya. Okay. So within domain Eukarya, what, um, what is the next uh, taxonomic rank? So kingdom. So that would be in here. That's the region. So within the Philippines, which region? Region 1, 2, NCR, 4, region 4A, region 4B. So in our case, region 4A, okay, Calabar zone. So in our, other, in our comparison here, that's kingdom animalia, okay? animals so within kingdom animalia which phylum because within within uh, the kingdom uh, animalia there are several phyla that we have here so here which within a uh, calabar zone which city so for example city of binyan okay so within kingdom animalia uh, the phylum that we're looking for is phylum chordata okay so within phylum chordata there are other uh, classes here um, so we are looking for class mammalia. So same here within Binyan, which barangay that we are looking for. So that's uh, Santo Tomas, barangay Santo Tomas. 
So within class mammalia, there are different orders, different groups, uh, different orders of organisms, and we're specifically looking for order carnivora. So same here, within uh, Barangay Santo Tomas, we're looking for village olivares homes, for example. That's the village that you're looking for. So within that village, which street are you are you uh, looking for? So within that order, because there are, there are there are other families within this order, as you can see. So family Felidae. So within um, within uh, Oliver's homes, for example, Main Street. That's the street that you're looking for. So within order Carnivora, family Felidae, and and uh, within family Felidae, which genus? Because there are other genera here within family. So for here, which street? Um, uh, which ha house so that's block 8 for example block 8 lot 21 so that's the particular house that you're looking for so that's genus pantera and then finally within that house which person are you going to send your letter to okay so for example you know um, leo for example that's the person that you want to send the letter to so in this case that person is this species so so that, that's how we can visualize uh, the different uh, taxonomic rank um, based on this example. So the largest taxonomic rank, the most general taxonomic rank is domain eukarya. So that's um, the country. The, the, the next uh, smaller taxonomic rank is the kingdom. Okay, the kingdom. So that's the region here. The next taxonomic rank is phylum because uh, as you can see, you know, within the taxonomic rank, uh, there are other uh, smaller groups within it. So within domain Eukarya, there are other kingdoms that you can find there. So within kingdom, there are either other phyla that you can find here, um, um, as you can see. So next is phylum. So that's the city. Then within uh, within the phylum, the next um, rank is class, the smaller rank, rank cla uh, class. So that's um, barangay. Then after that order, you have the village, family, that's the street, genus, that's the actual house, and then species, that's the specific person. So you go as, as you go higher, you're actually um, going smaller, okay, or does the group is becoming smaller. And then um, the other way around, as you go larger, uh, or as you talk about the bigger group, the description becomes more general, okay? So in the Linnaean classification, the taxonomic rank, um, as you can see, no, um, I've mentioned, no. So if you're specifically talking to this species, um, Panthera pardus or the leopard, um, the descriptions are quite specific to this group. Okay, that's th those descriptions are limited to them. But as you go into the next group, uh, genus Panthera, that actually involves um, other other species. Okay, so. Um, you have your uh, lions and tigers, um, uh, leopards, okay? Then next is family Felidae, okay? This one is um, a bigger group. So aside from uh, this genus Pan Pantera, you have other uh, groups of uh, felines, cats, domesticated cats, lynx, and others. And then uh, the next uh, uh, taxonomic rank order is bigger, order carnivora. So these are all the carnivorous um, organisms. So you have your wolves here and bears and other organisms. And then um, class mammalia. So these are all the mammals in the group. So all the mammals that you know of fall under class mammalia. Then all, uh, phylum chordata. So these are all the organisms um, that have backbone so they fall under phylum chordata so there's quite many you have your fish you have your um, amphibians your reptiles your birds um, and then um, phylum chordata is part of the kingdom animalia so these are all the animals uh, that these are organisms that cannot make their own food therefore they, they depend on other organisms for food so those are all the animals that we know of insects invertebrates um, cephalopods sh shelled organisms and then all of this kingdom uh, animalia are found within the main eukarya. So these are an, uh, organisms um, that possess nucleus within their cells. So that's quite a generic description because we have a lot of those organisms. So again, no, um, as you go uh, larger, 
it becomes more general same here as you go larger in the group um, it becomes more general but as you go smaller into the smaller group the description becomes more specific the Swedish botanist Carl von Linné is regarded as the father of taxonomy because he was the one who developed um, the Linnaean system of taxonomy, okay, so the Linnaean classification, so this was named after him. So that is used for categorization of organisms and binomial nomenclature, so that's the method for naming organisms. So we will learn more about this later. So his Swedish name is Carl von Linné. But he also rendered uh, his name in Latin as Carolus Linnaeus. And you can see his painting here. To learn more about his life, I recommend that you watch this video from Natural History Museum entitled A Film by Carl Linnaeus. I'll provide the link in the description below. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye!